trying to keep reasonably, uh, reasonably cool here at the Next Hope. Got a lot of exciting talks uh, throughout the day, throughout the night. If you haven't checked out the, the schedule, make sure you become aware that it's not just the talks up here on the 18th floor, but also we have a bunch of um, activity going on on the mezzanine level, uh, including some scheduled stuff, some lock picking, lock picking contests. We have a bunch of things going on in the hackerspace village, uh, a lot of uh, learning, a lot of do-it-yourself. We have uh, content going on in what we call the video temple area. These are all on your map of the program. Uh, in addition, uh, late night tonight, we have some concerts, some uh, audio and uh, video extravaganza style concerts starting up down on the uh, mezzanine level. Of course, the content in these rooms goes all the way through midnight and, uh, and beyond. So be sure to stick around, stay energized. If you need additional energy, you got the cafe, uh, I mean the uh, Club Mate down on the uh, mezzanine level to keep you, uh, keep you going. Uh, I'd like to uh, announce that the fourth track signups are now open, and as people sign up, we'll try to make sure we announce those. This is called the Moore Room. It's opposite the men's bathroom up the hallway. So just sign up on the sign-up sheets, your, your name, the talk title, anything else you might want to uh, add. Check those sheets frequently if there's a talk that you might want to attend. There's going to be some good ones that are not in the program. That's the, uh, uh, the Moore Room. Also, amd.hope.net is a website for the uh, latest on the uh, badges, those flashy, blinky lights you're wearing around your neck. These are programmable. They're active. They're very cool. There's a lot of uh, software surrounding them, amd.hope.net. Up next, um, we have someone who was with us in the last hope and luckily survived to, uh, to tell, the, tell the tale and uh, catch the uh, YouTube video of the, uh, the whole coffin uh, scene yeah, yeah. Uh, with the uh, procession and all that from the last time we were in this room. And we're uh, very happy to have uh, Johannes back again to talk all about sex. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, hey, good afternoon and right after Kaminsky. Very good. So, I'm, I'm glad I'm here again. In fact, I will be here twice, which makes it very exciting and worth the flyover from Europe. And today, I want to talk to you about smut. So, first of all, welcome to Hope. <laughs> and uh, my name is Johannes, and I'm part of Monochrome. Yo! And we are from Austria. That's how Austria looks like. There is, you know, it's a little bit wrong, but still, it, it works. Austrians are known for music and mass murder, so uh, <laughs> expect the best. <laughs> and uh, that's our official press photo. I like the image tag in it. Uh, for that's not nerd court. I don't know whatever it is. What? I, okay. So just to give you a brief uh, intro, what Monochrome does that gives you a little bit of a perspective why we do talk about sex and technology today. Uh, Monochrome started in 1993 uh, as a kind of like a fanzine project. Because we are European leftists, we didn't, kind, we didn't like the Mondo 2000 like liberal hippie kind of thing. So we started our own thing. In the meantime, it's 500 pages. If it drops on your foot, it breaks your toe. Uh, we just released a new issue a couple of months ago. We have a couple of them here, you can buy them. So we started as a fanzine, actually, in, and in the fight on it, oh yeah. Uh, we do t-shirts, I was a copyright infringement in a previous life, or slacking is killing the DIY industry. Uh, we do musicals about banking software, communist sock puppet shows where we talk about neoliberalism and stuff like that, Kiki and Boo Boo. Uh, we uh, are doing a series of uh, adventure games called Soviet Unter Zögersdorf about the last existing Soviet Republic. You can download it for free. It's for Linux and Windows and, and that Apple thing. Uh, we do a regular, like daily, pretty much like a webcomic kind of thing. We call it Monochrome's raw image format. And we have stuff like, good afternoon. Are you interested in attacking ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion? Uh, or dinosaurs, they squish us and use us as lube. Um, so if you want to check it out every day, a new cartoon or kind of thing we are doing. Uh, we created massive multi, uh, a massive multiplayer s uh, thumb wrestling uh, <laughs> with a couple of different network topologies and token ring networks and stuff like that. We have a top, like our, our record is like 1,200 people playing it at the same time. It was pretty okay. Uh, 
I'm not sure if you can see it, but we do something like flash mobs just for sculptures, because public art is so bad, you can do it in under five minutes on your Walmart parking space. So go out there, set up your own uh, thing. This one is called New Kids on the Roadblock. Uh, yeah. Uh, we did uh, blood sausage made out of our own blood. It was pretty tasty. Uh, and we do Robo Exotica together with a couple of other guys. And Robo Exotica is the festival for cocktail robotics. You might have heard about that one. We create and pre present machines that mix cocktails, serve cocktails, and drink cocktails. And for example, this one, it's the slowest and loudest mojito machine in the known universe. Uh, it's kind of steampunk, like Cory Doctorov would jerk off. Um, so, uh, why am I here? I'm here because Monochrome is doing a regular conference. We are doing it now the fourth time in San Francisco uh, in autumn, and it's called Oz Electronica. I'm not sure if, to, if you pronounce it Oz or Ars or whatever your language is. So it's Oz Electronica, and uh, it's about the future of screw it yourself. Uh, if you Twitter, please use the correct Twitter terms, uh, you know, strict tweeting. Uh, use monochrome hope, anal, anal hope, or press F1 for help. Uh, <laughs> and carry Goatsy in your heart. <laughs> because the human to testicle ratio has always been nearly one to one. Iris Electronica started in 2007. Uh, we had the idea a couple of years before that, but we, didn't find, we couldn't find a venue to host it because nobody wanted to host a sex and tech conference. So uh, finally we thought about why not doing it in San Francisco? I mean, you're wanking all the time there, so there's Silicon Valley is around the corner. Let's do it there. And actually that was a good team up. So we started in 2007 and the topic was pronovation. Uh, we started uh, the movement in a dungeon of kink.com, you might know kink.com, they're doing BDSM porn and stuff like that, and they uh, used to have like the so-called porn palace. Uh, it was a BDSM dungeon where they shot most of their um, nasty little videos, and it was the first time an academic conference was held there, so it was pretty okay. Uh, some people uh, were, there. it was pretty good, a pretty good crowd of people attended to see the talks and the demonstrations, and some people couldn't believe their eyes. <laughs> I checked out this nice anal probe, it was comfortable. <laughs> and, you know, why is the Holy Bible there? I tell you why, because the first Ars Electronica was dealing with pronovation, that means the history of pornography, sex, and technological innovation. And that's very, very important. Because none of the shit you use nowadays would be there without pornography or smut. The first things that were printed uh, by Gutenberg after he printed the Bible was erotica, okay? And he financed printing more Bibles with erotica. So the Holy Bible, and I mean, there's a spoiler, Jesus dies on page 681, okay? Uh, the Holy Bible, yeah? Uh, is closely related to sex technology. Uh, there is stuff like the Polaroid camera. The first Polaroid camera was called the Swinger. And you can imagine why it was called the Swinger in the 60s. Because they were targeting the amateur porn market. Because nobody actually, especially in the States, you know, 60s, nice. Nobody wanted to take like, like porn pictures or naked pictures of his.